Hello, welcome to the Mad Butter channel. My name's Chris. In this video, I'm going to talk about inverting an image in Luminar AI. So I think I first need to explain what inverting an image means, then show how to do it, and finally, why you might want to do that at all. To explain inversion, I need to touch on color theory in a simple way. On a computer screen, each pixel is made up of a mixture of red, green and blue. And each colour can have 256 different levels, ranging from 0 to 255, so 256 levels in all. If there are equal amounts of red, green and blue, then the pixel will be white, black or a shade of grey. If the amounts of red, green and blue differ, then the pixel will have a colour. In essence, what inversion does is to make a pixel the opposite in RGB terms to what it originally was. So if you take a monochrome image. When you invert, you take each of the RGB values away from 255 to give the inverted value. So for instance, if a pixel has RGB values of 0, 0, 0, which is black, when you invert it, you take 0, 0, 0 away from 255, 255, 255, giving unsurprisingly an inverted value of 255, 255, 255, which is white. So a black pixel turns white. If a pixel is 255, 255, 255, i.e. white, you take that from 255, 255, 255 to get 0, 0, 0, which is black. So a white pixel turns black. Mid-grey is 128, 128, 128. So inverting takes, that, takes those values from 255, 255, 255 to give 127, 127, 127, which is still mid-grey, so in effect no change. Here is a simple black to white gradient. When you invert it, you get this revised gradient below. So you can see on the left hand side, black pixels have become white. On the right hand side, white pixels have become black. And right in the middle, mid gray is unchanged. It also follows, as you can see, that dark gray becomes light gray and light gray becomes dark gray. With a colour image, things are slightly more complicated. And to help explain, I have shown here what is called the colour wheel. At the top at 12 o'clock is red, which has, as you might expect, an RGB value of 255.00, i.e. 4 intensity red with no green and blue. When you invert it, you take 255.00 away from 255, 255, 255, and you get 0, 255, 255, which is no red and full green and blue. That colour is cyan, which is shown on the opposite side of the colour wheel at 6 o'clock. Similarly, green at 4 o'clock is 0, 255, 0, i.e. full green with no red and blue. Inverting gives you 255, 0, 255, I know green and full red and blue. That colour is magenta, shown at 10 o'clock opposite to green. And finally blue at 8 o'clock is 0, 0, 255. And inverting it gives you 255, 255, 0. I know blue and full red and green, which gives yellow, shown opposite blue at 2 o'clock. This process can be summarised by these images. At the top are the three primary colours, red, green and blue. When you invert, you get cyan, magenta and yellow, as shown in the lower part of the image. Of course, with these pure primary colours, the only RGB values are 0 or 255. So when you invert, you still only get RGB values of 0 or 255. So the inverted colours come out at full intensity and brightness. The result of inversion is not so 
obvious with other colours where you get RGB values between the extremes of 0 and 255. So here's an example. On the far left is a dark yellowish colour which has RGB values of 117, 78 and 17. When you invert this you get RGB values of 138, 177, 238 which is the second colour from the left, a sort of light blue colour. The third blue-green colour has RGB values of 171, 250 and 229. And when you invert this, you get values of 84, 5 and 26, which is the darkish reddish purple colour on the right. Hopefully you can see that dark colours which have low RGB values give light colours when inverted and light colours give dark colours on inversion. But you still get the colour opposite on the colour wheel. So the darkish yellow turns a sort of blue and the light cyanish colour turns a sort of dark red purple. So hopefully that is a sufficient explanation to show what is going on when you invert an image. So, how do we actually invert an image in Luminar AI? Well, it's actually very simple. Here is a black and white image with a gradient going from black on the left to white on the right. To invert the image, go to the light tool in the Essentials panel and open the Curves panel. I won't go into details of curves in this video, but to invert, all you need to do is reverse the slope of the curve by pulling the left hand point from the bottom to the top and the right hand point from the top to the bottom. As you can see, the gradient is now reversed with white on the left and black on the right. Of course, the background has also inverted as well, but it obviously wasn't pure white as the inverted background is a very dark grey and not black. Similarly with a colour image. Here we have one with the primary colours red, green and blue. So we go to the light panel, open the curves and rever reverse the slope of the curve. Now that's not exactly cyan, magenta and yellow. I've noticed this in Luminar, what you actually need to do is then pull up the curve to brighten the image a bit. And there we now have cyan, magenta and yellow. And of course, the cyanish background of the original image has turned to a sort of red. So that's how you invert images in Luminar AI. It's really quite simple. So the final point of all this is why would you want to do this? The first reason you might want to invert an image is a technical one. If, like me, you have a lot of old print film negatives, which you want to digitise by scanning, then, as the name negative suggests, print film negatives are inversions of the actual image. So once you have scanned them, you need to invert to get the proper image result. So. Here is an old black and white film which I've scanned into the computer. I must apologise that it's not in the best of condition, it's rather old, so the end result has a lot of marks on it. But as you can see, the sky is dark and the foreground is bright, which is the opposite of what the image should be. So let's invert it in the usual way. going to the light curves and reversing the slope of the curve if I can get hold of it. There we are. Now we have a sort of recognizable image. What you'll find however is that you'll need to adjust the image to get a good tonal range and contrast. I won't go into that process here but this is the result after doing the necessary adjustments. That's the final scanned image, which 
looks fairly reasonable, apart from all the horrible marks caused by probably years of decay. OK, now let's look at a colour negative. So here is the same image, but this time in colour, with the familiar brownish colour of a negative. Let's invert it. As you can see, as with the black and white image, now the sky is light and the foreground is darker, but you get this horrible bluey green result. As with the black and white image, you need to adjust the tonal range and correct the colors. Again, I won't go into the details, but this is the result after you've corrected the colors and the contrast, etc. And again, this looks reasonable, apart from all the horrible age-related marks from the negative itself. The other reason for inverting images is that you can create some really cool effects. Take this image of this strange tree trunk formation. What I want to do is to invert the image and add it onto the original as a new layer on top really a texture in Luminar AI terms and then mask it in as required. So let's invert it. We go to the Edit tab, Light Tool, Curves and invert the image. Now as we want to put this on top of the original we need to first export it as a new image. I've already done that, so let's revert back to the original image and then go to the mask, local masking tool, add a texture, custom texture, and there's the inverted image which we add, and then we'll increase the opacity to 100%. Now we want to mask it in, but first to get the effect I want, we want to change the blend mode to hue, which gives this sort of strange blue color. We're now going to mask in parts of the image. And we'll start, we'll make the brush a little less soft, and we'll start with about 60% or just over. We're on paint, increase the size of the brush, and when you mask it in, you get, as you'll see in a minute, you'll get this quite cool sort of d bluish decolorized look like that. It's a bit, I'm rushing through this a bit. But so that's And now we'll increase to 100% and mask it in over the tree trunk to get this sort of dark purpley look. Brush a bit smaller, get all the roots. Obviously you'll do a much better job if you were Doing this yourself on your own images, taking a bit more time. So we need to go back to 60 odd and just mask in these bits. Decolorize them. Yeah. So that will do. So that's I think it's quite a cool effect. This love dark blue trunk and the sort of slightly blue or silvery decolorized look on the background where we masked at sixty percent rather than a hundred percent. So there's a second reason for using inverted images to produce all sorts of interesting effects like this. 
So I hope you, I hope you found this interesting and useful. If you want me to explain anything more, in particular maybe how to correct the colours and the tonal range after inverting a negative, do please let me know. In the meantime, thanks for watching.